here we go again. Hello everyone, this is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, and welcome to the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast number 188. This is part two of uh, how to teach Jeet Kune Do. As you're logging in, if you'd be kind enough to say where you're logging in from, hit the like button and feel free to continue doing so, <clears throat> excuse me, throughout the broadcast. If you're catching the simulcast over on the YouTube, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell as well. If you enjoy my work and you'd like to support the program, please visit jkdrebel.com and uh, click on the Rebel Gear link where you'll see stuff like this. I've been featuring this one for a couple months now, the four tenets of uh, Jeet Kune Do uh, t-shirt, available as a hoodie, a long sleeve, a coffee mug, all that good stuff. Uh, but of course, the best thing you can do is to share this video and spread the word about the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast. So um, literally, and I don't use that incorrectly, literally right after last week's broadcast, um, I came across a blog article uh, by my JKD senior, Chris Kent, over on his uh, Facebook page. And it was uh, titled, The Constructive Use of Constraints in Training. So I suggest that you head over there right after this, watching this broadcast, uh, head over to uh, Chris's page and uh, read that blog article. It'll definitely give you a lot of ideas um, that, that will supplement what we're going to talk about now. In fact, I asked Chris last week for permission. As soon as I read his blog post, I go, look, you just gave me the idea for a part two of um, today's broadcast, last week's broadcast. Right. And he said, yeah, sure. Go, uh, you know, feel free. And um, that's one of those uh, really uh, cool serendipitous moments that happens in, uh, in JKD. If you've been around for a while and if you know to look for opportunity and or lessons in uh, everything around you. Um, so anyhow, in another era, what it, this is how I look at it. What Chris uh, is talking about uh, would have been referred to as uh, limited sparring, right? Something that you can read about in his and uh, Tim Tackett's terrific book. Um, this one right here, right? Jun Fan Ji Kendo, the textbook. You can you can uh, look it up in there, um, but what I want to tell you also is that if you are ever in doubt how to teach a JKD class, or if you don't teach, if you just have a a, a training group, um, you really don't have to go too far to get material, so to speak. There is an awful lot of information in this book right here. Right, Jeet Kune Do, uh, commentaries on the Marshall Way. Um, we have talked about this before, but it's one of those things that has to be discussed over and over again so that uh, it becomes like a primary aspect of, of people's um, interest and development. So pages 294 to 308, there's a section titled An Organized Lesson Plan for Jeet Kune Do. So that is what, 294 to 308, that's uh, six, uh, how much is that, uh, 12 pages, uh, 14 pages, right? Uh, an organized lesson plan for Jeet Kune Do. Right after that, on page 309, is another section titled Bruce Lee's Private Lesson. So my question to all of you JKD people here on Facebook and the YouTube is, why haven't we ever had a discussion of this trove of information with all the back and forth thing? That's a word. Uh, with all the back and forth thing that goes on on Facebook about Jeet Kune Do, how come we've never had a discussion uh, about this? But I digress. The lesson plan section covers ideas for 12 lessons and the private lesson section covers 10 sessions. Now here, here's what's interesting, right? And again, it's the serendipitous effect of it. An interesting thing that I discovered is that some of the information is in those notes is actually shared in a letter with Taki Kimura um, in uh, April of 1966. So a few weeks ago when I did the broadcast about the other Bruce Lee letters and I, and I wrote about that, I was surprised to find that that's actually taken 
from his class, from his um, class notes, the notes on how to teach a class. Um, another interesting thing is that in Bruce Lee's lesson plans, almost everything is about offense, um, which is, and I find that interesting because I can recall uh, Sifu Richard Bustillo in the early days telling me to focus on teaching people how to hit um, since defense is an instinctive thing. So it's kind of cool when something that you experience personally is verified by Bruce Lee's direct notes, if you get what I'm saying. Uh, now, so there, there's stuff about lesson plan, what to teach. In case you're wondering about, um, no, no, lesson plans about how to teach. In case you're wondering about what to teach and about specific technical information, be aware that in this book, all right, there is a 56 page title. It's a fixed, uh, 56 page section titled The Tools of Combat, Part One The Upper Limbs, followed by, quite logically, uh, not as extensive though, but 29 pages on uh, titled uh, The Lower Limbs. So it's part two of The Tools of Combat. So with all of this, none of us should be at a loss for what to train or what to teach in any kind of a Jeet Kune Do setting, um, be it formal class or an informal get together, because Bruce Lee has done all the work for us. Well, Bruce Lee and John Little, right? They, those two have done all the work for us. So again, uh, related to what I asked you earlier, and neither of these questions is rhetorical. Who here has done an extensive, in-depth study of this material in commentaries on the way and made use of it in your training? All right, I'm gonna leave you with that. Um, just to ask you if you think that this is a great resource that more of us should be discussing or not. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. And that's all I got to say about this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Follow me on Twitter at Dwight Woods and on Instagram at Dwight D. Woods. Uh, coming up on Friday the 6th. Jeet Kune Do Dialogues episode with uh, Sean Kitzman of the Academy in uh, Bloomington, Minnesota. And uh, that should be at the regular time, 6 p.m. Eastern. Today's a purple day. I couldn't find my other purple shirt. I don't know what's going on with the laundry here. I'll have to check with the dudette and see what's going on. Uh, so I'll see some of you on Friday, hopefully, for the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues. If not, I'll see you next week, same time, for another issue of the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast. Until then, this is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day. Talk soon. Take care.